Hackintoshes, are they worth it? All right, guys, so probably one of my other videos you saw watching, uh, showing you around the MacBook Pro Vega. Well, uh, I've always, you know, done Final Cut Pro stuff like that, and uh, the Mac Pros have always just been really expensive and just really out there on price and everything. So about two years ago, I built my first Hackintosh. It consisted of an i6700K, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, water-cooled, and I think I started out with a 980 Ti, then went up to the 1080 Ti. I was never happy with NVIDIA graphics, of course, on a Mac because of the drivers and such. So uh, a couple of months ago, you know, I decided, you know, it's time to upgrade the uh, Hackintosh. So I started saving up and just doing different parts and stuff. Upgraded my motherboard, upgraded the processor, and upgraded the graphics cards. Basically, I went from an i7-6700K, which I'm now running an i9-900K. Uh, with a, a Aurora Gigabit uh, Pro board, and at first I started out with one Radeon Vega 64. Now I'm actually running two Radeon Vega 64s, which makes a good difference in Final Cut Pro. So uh, you know, I just wanted to uh, touch base on that and you know and everything. Is this everybody that flies and everything? They use video editing software, and it's sometimes just a more reasonable way to uh, get by on what you can get for the money. So. You know, uh, Apple is, of course, a monopoly on their money and everything, so it's not cheap and everything, but uh, I built these, you know, and I don't really have that much, just parts and stuff in it. There is, you know, of course, problems running a Hackintosh, you know, if an update might break something, you have to fix it, so forth and so on. But overall, you know, I've been very pleased with a Hackintosh, and I just wanted to share with you some of the benchmarks and stuff on how impressive this thing is. You know, this will compete with a, a an iMac Pro, you know, probably pretty close to the 18 core. I wouldn't say it would beat it. You know, since I don't have an iMac Pro, I can't comment on that. So, uh, coming up, I'm just going to show you a quick inside look of it and everything, show you what I did. That, and then I'll go over some times on some of the videos on my page. You can look at those. I'll put them in the notes and everything so you can see that. So, coming up next, I'm just going to show you the inside. All right, so uh, I reused my case I had. I left all my graphics and stuff on it, as you can tell. Pretty happy with the case, you know. It's it's a large case and everything. Uh, I do still have the I do have a DVD uh, burner slash Blu-ray driver in it because every once in a while I have to burn some pictures and stuff to a disc for someone and everything. But uh, didn't really go big on the lighting and stuff because that's not what I built this thing for. But as you can tell, I have the dual Radeon uh, Vega 64s. Uh, pretty much, unless you're doing something video graphic intense, it only uses one at a time. I want the Corsair H115 water pump on this. I want the i9. I did upgrade my memory to, uh, 30, uh, of course, 32 gigs, uh, 3200 megahertz Corsair RAM. Uh, I kept the power supply the same because uh, when I first bought my uh, power supply, I went with the biggest I could uh, afford at the time, and it's held fine. It's working fine with both the Vegas. On this Hackintosh, everything works. There's nothing that doesn't work. Handoff, continue. Uh, continuity, uh, airdrop, all that works. So I'm very pleased with that. And also all my USB ports work. Is I have those on the top, some of them are USB 3. They work fine. On the back of the uh, board here, I do have uh, USB-C cables and stuff. They work fine. I get transfer speeds. Uh, typical of a normal external hard drive, USB 3. But however, on my Samsung uh, one terabyte solid state drive, that's USB-C. I get a uh, 600 meg writes and right around 600 meg reads, so it works perfectly for working with files in between my computers and everything. But that's pretty much the inside of my Hackintosh and everything. Now I'm just going to go over a few numbers with you just to show you how well it uh, processes and stuff. So I'll be right back with that. All right, so uh, I took some of the select videos that I've ran on multiple machines to do a comparison. Uh, the one video I'm gonna start with is actually not on my YouTube page. It's just a video I throw together. I called it Test. It was really just to see how well this, uh, uh, all these ran, different things and everything. But on my original MacBook Pro 2015 i7, it done it in five minutes, 15 seconds. And uh, then I uh, picked up the uh, 2018 MacBook Pro i9 with the 560 in it. Before I returned it, I did get to run the test on it. It done it in four minutes and 23 seconds. So, you know, quite a, about a minute difference there. Just for laughs and grins, I throw it in on my 2017 
MacBook Pro Touch i5, it took over 31 minutes for it to do that one video. So, you know, of course the i5 is not going to do it fast. But uh, my MacBook Pro Vega, when I got it and everything, I throw the test out there on it. It done it in 3 minutes, 14 seconds. So, again, a lot faster. But, uh, for, for example, uh, my original Hackintosh done the test with the i7-6700K. It done it in 4 minutes, 53 seconds. When I changed it over to 1080 Ti, it dropped to 4 minutes and 10 seconds. Not not a lot of a difference there, but uh, now then, when you throw it to the Hackintosh with the single Vega, it done it in 3 minutes, 50 seconds. So, you know, that was just one single Vega. Uh, when I throw it in two Vegas, it dropped it down to 2 minutes, 55 seconds. So, you know, not, not a lot of difference in everything, but... Uh, I know a lot of people, you know, uh, pay attention to the Bruce X test. I'm going to put all these times up to you in the notes so you'll see them there, so you can see the various videos. But my original MacBook Pro 2015 done the Bruce X in 55.89 seconds. So then uh, the 2017 i5 done it in 41 seconds. The uh, i9 5600 MacBook Pro done the Bruce X in 36 seconds. The... Uh, Vega, when I got it, it done it in 32 seconds. The uh, Hackintosh with uh, the 980 Ti done it in about 32 seconds. The uh, Hackintosh with the i7-6700K 1080 Ti done it in 18 seconds. However, the, uh, MacBook, the Hackintosh with the uh, single Vega done it in 8.16 seconds. Then when I throw it in the second bag, it dropped to 6.93 seconds. So as you can tell, you know, quite the the second Vega didn't help tremendously, but it did help. So uh, like I said, I'm going to throw up some uh, tests and stuff on this so you can see the real world test. Uh, my Hackintosh, I do have overclocked to 5 gigahertz right now. I'm running stable. Uh, highest temperatures I'm seeing is uh, 70, 71 degrees with it that high. So I might go up a little more after it's all said and done. Idle temperature right now is a steady 30, 32 degrees Celsius. So I'm very tickled with that, you know, on how it handles that. But uh, I will post the uh, pictures and stuff of that. And if you have any questions or like to know anything more about these, please drop it in the comments. I'll be glad to help. Again, I'm very, very pleased with my Hackintosh. Always, guys, thanks for watching.